We expect that artificial intelligence is all about robots and how these robots have complex minds and how they should be able to interact with humans and interact with each other. The movies WALL-E and Star Wars are perfect examples of this. However, in reality, artificial intelligence has a completely different meaning. AI is all about classification, being able to do tasks that a human could do visually, but do it in a completely automated manner. And a good example of this is in the security setting, being able to do object classification, detecting people, detecting cars, detecting fire hydrants, dogs, in just one image is one task that artificial intelligence can achieve. However, another example is that of OneRing, and this is in the medical sense. OneRing is an intelligent monitoring device for Parkinson's disease. And that's why today I'll be talking about how my first experiences with Parkinson's disease inspired me to want to build something that can influence the lives of Parkinson's patients and how I leveraged artificial intelligence, the technologies behind it, to build something that I could deploy to patients so that they could benefit, it, ben benefit from it. So first off, what is Parkinson's? Well, Parkinson's is a neurodegenerative disorder, meaning that over time, Parkinson's patients will lose control of their movement, meaning that they'll have tremors, they'll have shaking, they'll have a lot of problems that make it significantly harder for them to lead independent lives. And that's why the biggest problem in current Parkinson's disease diagnostics is that they're purely qualitative. In the way that a physician has to sit down with the Parkinson's patient in order to visually recognize the severity of motor symptoms and use that information to prescribe medications. And this process has two major problems. One, it's subject to extensive human error. And secondly, it's very infrequent. Since a Parkinson's patient will have at most one or two monitoring appointments in an entire month, this prevents the physician from being able to get an accurate representation of how their patient's motor symptoms are behaving when they're at home. And this therefore prevents them from being able to accurately prescribe medications to alleviate symptoms. And that's why I wanted to build something that could solve this, solution, solve this problem. And that's why I built an intelligent wearable ring that can capture movement data for an entire day in a very passive manner. And then analyze this data using machine learning so that then I can diagnose the severity of motor symptoms at each and every hour of the day, output a daily patient report, a coherent report for the physician, so that then they can better prescribe medications. And then overall use artificial intelligence to help the physician alleviate the symptoms of their patient. So now I want to go back six years to when I was 10 years old, where this entire journey actually began. I was 10 years old and I was just surfing YouTube like any 10 year old would do. And I came across a video of Muhammad Ali. This was a video of him lighting the Olympic torch in Atlanta in 1996 during the Olympics. And what I saw in this video was Muhammad Ali lighting the torch, but his hands were shaking violently. And I had no idea why that was happening. So I called my dad over and I asked him, why, why is his hand shaking? And he told me that it's because of Parkinson's. Now I, know, I knew who Muhammad Ali was, that he was a great boxer, but I had absolutely no idea what Parkinson's was. So I decided to use the internet. I researched what Parkinson's is, and I found out about all the issues that it causes. And that, caused, and that made me think and be curious about how someone like Muhammad Ali can go about their regular day and have these shakings constantly happening. How could they lead a normal lifestyle? And that's why Parkinson's was always ingrained in my head. I wanted to develop some solution for it. And that's why as I grew older, I decided to volunteer at an institute for Parkinson's, just to do simple filing work, help out at the institute, talk to some patients. But over there, I was able to have first-hand experiences and talk with uh, Parkinson's patients. I was able to learn their stories, how they were adventurous before they got the disease, how they wanted to climb mountains, how they wanted to make companies, be entrepreneurs. But as soon as they were diagnosed with the disease, that all prevented from being able to happen. They, had to, they were unable to do simple tasks, like eating food, brushing their teeth, being able to just drive their car. Those things became significantly harder. And that's why this was very touching to me. I really wanted to build something that could, at, to some extent, make their lives easier and be able to cope with their lives in a much simpler manner. But I did not know how to do this at the age of 15. But Naturally, since I've participated in so many science fairs, since first grade I started doing science fairs, the answer came naturally. 
the, one, the biggest thing that I've learned from participating in science fairs is, is that if you have a problem, you should use whatever resources you have available to yourself and rapidly prototype. Keep building something, even if it does not work at the beginning, is keep making new prototypes, new versions. And then from that, at the end, you'll finally have something that you can bring out to society, that can actually help society. And that's what, so that resource that I figured out was artificial intelligence. Now at that time of age 15, I had no idea what artificial intelligence was. But I watched tutorials, I read blogs, and I found out that that science was something purely magical. Simply being able to do automated diagnostics, automatically ma making decisions, seemed so cool to me that I made it my passion to read more and learn more about it so that I could become an expert in that field. So that's why my goal became to use artificial intelligence to improve the lives of Parkinson's patients. And in order to do this, I had three main stages that I had to achieve. The first one was to be able to train a machine learning model that can predict the severity of motor symptoms in an automated manner. And then actually build some sort of a device that can capture movement data. And then lastly, go through a stage of prototype iteration, constantly building new products, and then in the end being able to build something that I can actually put on Parkinson's patients, give it to them so that then they'll be able to benefit from that technology. So for machine learning, I had three, three sub-stages that I had to go through. The first one was to be able to find training data. Now in the training data, what I wanted to do was to be able to see the various severities that are present in Parkinson's disease. Be able to see that if I have movement data for Parkinson's patient, how can I build something that would be able to automatically distinguish between those severities? So I found a data set which had hours and hours of Parkinson's disease data of varying disease severities, and from that, I extracted features from them, meaning that I extracted the most important information just from raw acceleration data from someone's hand. So then from that meaningful representation, I could teach a machine learning model to automatically see the differences in the severities and then automatically predict what that severity should be when it sees new Parkinson's data. So then with the algorithms made, I also had to build a system that could capture movement data for an extended period of time. And this was achieved through 3D printing, another big fascination of mine. Just being able to visualize something, put it into Google SketchUp, and then send it off the 3D printer, and the next day have it in your hand was just so magical to me that I just wanted to start as soon as I got the idea. So that's why I decided to use 3D printing to build something um, that a patient could wear. And now this image shows all of my journey throughout my prototypes. At the beginning, I wanted to, my goal was to simply build some algorithms. But then I wanted to actually put it onto Parkinson's patients. I knew that if, it, if this was to be a reality, I had to put it on patients, get their data, and see that it was, it was, it was validated. In order to do that, I went through the first prototype, just simply building an armband that could just capture data and then tell me if it was working or not. So then from that, I could get feedback from the patients and then move on to later, later prototypes, in which I really wanted to build something that was ju like jewelry, so someone would want to wear it. So that's why I decided to move on into a ring form factor. So a patient would be like, hey, this is a wearable that I want to wear. I'll wear it every day, and I'll keep giving that data to the algorithms and then to my physician so that they can help me get better prescriptions of medication. So after that final prototype was made, I knew that this is something I can bring out to Parkinson's patients. And in order to do that, I had to go through Kickstarter. This was a way that allowed me to connect with the community of Parkinson's. I was able to su success succeed in my goal of first building something for Parkinson's patients, but then actually deploying it to them so that they could benefit from that technology. So I built dozens and dozens of rings and gave it to Parkinson's patients all around the world so that now, now they can actively use that with their physicians, get better prescriptions, prescriptions of medication, and then be able to actually alleviate their symptoms. And now I want to share just uh, one comment that came out from Kickstarter. Someone who really was able to use this product, um, and I'm, I'm really happy that I was able to use artificial intelligence and use that technology to give benefit to these patients. And the first one was that the, the person's having deep brain stimulation surgery in which the doctors put electrodes in the patient's brain so that then their motor symptoms are alleviated. And he plans on using this system to be able to monitor his tremors before he gets DBS surgery and then how it affects him after. 
So it gives him that whole new way to see how that surgery benefited him. So now what's this overall impact on Parkinson's patients? Well, it brings the doctors to the fingertips of a Parkinson's patient. Through artificial intelligence, I was able to bring all the analysis capabilities that a doctor can do to the fingertips of a patient. It's constantly following them, constantly taking data, constantly analyzing that data so you could give it to that physician so then they can better prescribe medications and help that uh, patient. So now, through this experience with building something using artificial intelligence and working with Parkinson's patients, I was able to see that artificial intelligence can be used to solve many new issues. Let's say if there's other medical diagnostics that are right now inefficient, expensive. Through artificial intelligence, we can go back to the drawing board and figure out new and better ways to monitor those diseases. We can see, we can make new devices. We can make new algorithms to monitor those diseases in a way more efficient manner. And that's why I plan on continuing to work with patients, continue to continue working on my artificial intelligence so that I can improve Parkinson's patients' lives on a global scale. Thank you.